Constructing Resilient Education, Social Practices Which Form Community, Setting the Scene of the Fractured Environment. In this presentation, we will examine some key social practices which have been useful for the embodiment of the Ragged University Project, reflecting on ideas of communities of practice in the light of the social, economic and cultural configuration of present-day Britain. In an increasingly corporate and globalised world, where educational practices are often overly affected by financialization, there is a need to create education and learning which are resilient for the learner rather than the organisation. This is done specifically in response to the sociological environment having become dominated by centralised, vertically integrated, command and control corporate projects, whereby the experience and lives of people are kept constantly in fractured states. I argue that corresponding to the denudation and homogenization of the natural world, we're experiencing a denudation and homogenization of the sociological world, and this significantly includes learning and education. For many, there is not even the time or the resources to maintain sufficient nurture of ties with family and friends, let alone achieve professional goals. A simple axiom which helps expose the dynamics of this fractured state that I'm talking about is if you're not financially poor, you're likely time poor. I'm raising an important cultural question by situating learning within the fractured environment, which causes so many valuable education endeavors to become fragile, altered, and or disappear. Orienting organizational practices to respond to hostile environments is thus a vital strategy. This fractured state interferes with the planning of projects outside of corporate structures, and when projects are performed within corporate structures, they have any non-contiguous values and practice altered to corporate agendas or are obscured. Key examples include the radical narrowing and hollowing out of the subject area of political economy, also how critical pedagogies can end up in forms which fail to critically challenge any arrangement. Corporate education suffers from generations of managerial practices, which Professor Joel Backham summarizes neatly. Corporations are externalizing machines in that, as structures, they externalize what they perceive to be costs and enclose what they perceive to be benefit. As a result, despite many of its practitioners, Education as a sector demonstrates diminished interest in the provision of a public good in favour for market values, more explicitly stock market values. The corporate management of the world of music production and football offers strong analogies to what is manifest in their education and other sectors. The idea that the current configuration of the music industry, or say FIFA, that they support the diversification rather than the standardization and commodification and pretty much the narrowing of music and sport. It's specious to the point of fallacy. The corporate environment must be understood as hostile to diversification, innovation and invention. It's extended way past its helpfulness in our societies. In response to this, for those who are situated outside of the corporate, it is imperative to adopt tactics which build capacities to adapt, improvise and overcome, expecting disruptive, dislocating cultural forces. My interest in particular focuses on social practices which can serve individuals and populations who are disenfranchised by the financialized and social status-laden credentialized landscape to generate educational trajectories in their own lives, in our lives. This draws heavily on critical lessons surfaced in the field of international development, which I suggest are becoming vitally important for surviving in post-industrial societies such as Britain, as much as economically sacked nations which are labelled as developing. 
basing organizational practices on elements autonomous of dominating corporate structures means that whatever community looks like is less likely to take on the corrosive behaviors and practices propagated by corporate shaping forces. Increasingly, academics must develop work in their own unpaid time should they want to diverge from curricular mandates, develop research perspectives, or critically enrich student experience. In a related way, for many learner thinkers, they must develop their own education, which pertains to human development independently from the support of centralized resource structures in their own terrain via the means they have available to them. Learning from experience, the Ragged University website serves as a social document of adaptive efforts to run a project of education since before 2010. A key moment of learning came at the point at which we got registered as a charity before the, we decided to immediately close it. The decision to do this was counterintuitive, but it was taken after reflecting on the nature of how the third sector and the public sector are now formulated as extensions of the financial sector. And this reinforces complex social problems. This decision was made partly through recognizing that formalized organizational structures, like charitable structures, like company structures, commonly get colonized by the administrations, by chasing resources, and by gatekeeping in groups. There are also problems of dehumanization psychology that are important to look at, such as infrahumanization. The choice was made to close the project as a charity to focus on the development of understandings which could constitute a practical philosophy which could protect the ideas of education and learning as something that any individual can embody in their own context, free of chains of dependency. This strategy aims to open up spaces structured around fluid collegiality rather than the damaging corporate practices of command and control, etc., that pit colleague against colleague for resources which are made artificially scarce. Culturally, this X-factor-like pattern of competition has been promoted to the exclusion of other dynamics as a mode of governance which rules through divide, holding within it the anthropological legacy of colonial Britain. Britain was the first place to be colonized in these respects, and we must recognize and scrutinize deeply how corporate administrative systems have emerged from the East India Company as our historical progenitor. Nick, in his book, The Corporation That Changed the World, how the East India Company shaped the modern multinational does a good job of laying this history out. The creation of Britain as a society of extreme inequality has brought with it crystallizing caste systems codified with hierarchies of legitimacy that are ultimately used to demarcate social and intellectual distinction and ultimately to demarcate access to opportunity. In response to this, this fractured environment, I'm picking out some of the elements of the Ragged University practice and talking about them. But it's hard to put 13 years of thinking, writing, practicing, experimentation down. So one of the key practices of Ragged University that we experimented with is the formation of public events where knowledge is shared or social activities 
uh, bring people together to learn. And these are done in social settings that are free to use, pubs, cafes, libraries, and there are places that don't have institutional rules. These events don't happen within universities or colleges. One of the elements I'm going to bring out here is conceptualizing the organizer as a reader. If you conceptualize the coordinator of events as the reader in the subject matter, this elementary practice provides the opportunity to build off of the back of learning experiences and shared activities. In this framing, Understanding the educational affordances of interpersonal interaction has taken center stage, providing considerable sociological substrate, the matter of learning, sufficient to manifest valuable social relations in visible colleges for activities commonly associated with higher education. So in, in very basic terms, trying to indicate here that the educational value, the power, is stored in the relationships and not in the material. And it's by organizing the relationships in the world and reorganizing them as the world keeps on fracturing our ability to plan that's the social practice, but the, the person who's coordinating the, the, the general activities is the reader, is, is the, the, the key learner there. So I've written a lot about different kinds of activities that generate educational outcomes and learning the development of skills. Important in this, this kind of strategy is to use available infrastructure and common technology. And inspiration has been drawn from Rabindranath Tagore, who expressed how all you needed to make is school is a shade of the tree to sit in. And that speaks to the dynamicism we have to have. As uh, our, our world constantly changes, and where, where there's space uh, today, it may not exist tomorrow, but it's to use what the, what's available in the landscape, what's available in the people to bring together educational practice. And community naturally forms around, you know, so I, I would argue, learning and you know, education is, is a social behavior. So using public spaces like pubs, cafes, libraries, parks, and other free spaces that allow individuals to come together and negotiate and renegotiate how they're interacting in these spaces is the basic substance of education as I'm framing it. Specifically, these spaces are where knowledge and practices which have been enveloped by institutions and professions are reappropriated and reorganized as a part of an open and shared commons. Examples are ownership of speciated language, so language that may belong to the field of mathematics. It belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to the academy. Um, written works, written language and sharing written pieces is not just an academic practice, it's a creative act that everybody can manifest in their life. Referencing information sources and seeking the review of peers, all of these elements have uh, been commonly associated as belonging to and within the academy. and. Whilst these things exist within academia, they originate in our lives, in our social relationships, in the, the behaviours that amount to human development, which I equate education to.
For those whose interests sit outside of the financialized and power-laden enclosure of corporately organized education, the capacity to adapt to and use available infrastructure as a substrate of learning activities is, is absolutely key. It's in these interstices where you can find the space to, to organize. In Ragged University, I've been formulating con uh, the concept of the, the living curriculum, which draws on the world around in order to generate higher educational outcomes. If I'm standing looking into the world, we can see all knowledge in its manifest form is at the center of that. Using common technology rather than cutting edge technology is an important part of the core formulation. The hopes and dreams of the digital represent the source of many problems we're facing today. Stepping back from the corporate shaping of the means and being able not to use stock market driven products and services such as those offered by Microsoft and Apple and Google and other monopolistic behemoths. These, these organizations that, that have been had up in courts for lots of white collar crime. So why should we attribute ethics greater than they have already displayed to them? And why should we build something as important as education on the back of their enclosure? Rather than using these proprietary technologies, try and utilize technologies that are capable of functioning independently of paywalls and uh, the dependency capitalism they engineer. Good examples of such pedagogical technologies include dialogue, people speaking, conversation, interaction, paper and ink, and open source silicon technologies like Linux. So it's, it's really thinking about learning in the wild and how you can form educational activities across time. So it's, it's not like walking down a road. It's much more like crossing an ice floor, living in our environment. So we, we have to be op opportunistic and pragmatic and understanding of people's absence and um, be able to work independently as well as together. Learning in the wild reconfigures elements as activities and goods no longer officiated by financialized hierarchies, but instead as intrinsically owned activities, which embody value and function in the lives of practitioners. It would be nice, you know, the idea of institutions recognizing the value of the intellectual and academic work people do in their own lives. Um, I'm not confident that the administrative structures and uh, the way our, our, our nation's structured allows this at all. I think the education as human development is anathema to education as a profit-driven enterprise. So the, the, the modern experience of living lives in the interstices of what has been commanded by the mechanical structures of society must be acknowledged and drawn upon to search for educational means that do not just recreate the landscape we already exist in and under. So I'm going to leave it there and... Uh, point out that there is a great amount of documentation on the website. As far as communities of practice go, I think we should, we, we've got to think about how we formulate these in the hostile environment we are living in, this mismanaged country. Thank you for your time.